video. Today we're going to be creating a pop out image effect combining these two images. So let's get to it. So now before we get into the technical aspects and mechanics of what we need to do to combine these two images, as I often do, I just want to point out the importance of matching lighting and perspective in terms of this kind of technique. It's it's one of those things where um, if you were to look at the phone image, you'll see the lighting, the main lighting source is coming from behind and kind of, you know, reflecting forward and it has kind of a nice orangey feel to it. In the same way with the beach scene, clearly the the main light source is the setting sun, which again is behind and kind of, you know, reflecting forward off of the surface. So we'll see that that helps very much in the way of just combining the two images without having to do too much work. It's very easy to take an image that really doesn't have any related lighting or whatnot, and you can do all the steps and do all the things right, and it still won't really be convincing because our minds really want to have that consistency in all those details. So that being said, let's get started on combining those two images. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is copy this image of the jar on the beach as a new layer onto the phone image. And then next we can use the pick tool to try to arrange how we want this image to fit over the phone. And one thing to keep in mind is uh, what really sells this effect, in my opinion, is having some part of the image that's being overlaid extending beyond the region of the phone. Because then in that way, you know, that gives it more of that pop-out feel instead of the image just being on the phone itself. So we'll want to make sure that it covers the entire screen area. And then we can kind of reduce the region of care about with the selection tool. Just select the region that we want, and we'll refine this later, and then do Selection Invert, and then hit Delete. And then now we can see primarily the area of the image and it resting on top of the phone. And so now we're going to use some selection tools to try to refine this so that it looks more like it's part of the screen on the phone. So to do that, we'll probably reduce the opacity once again, just so that we still have our reference. Then we can go to Selection Tools, and I'm going to choose Freehand, and then change that to Point to Point. And this is just so that we can get those nice, sharp edges along where the phone screen lines are. So just clicking, say, here, and dragging along, and then you can see where that line goes and then readjust it as necessary. And all I'm going to do is just try to create cutouts so that I'll take slices at a time. I'm not going to try to, you know, do a perfect selection all the way around. This is a little bit easier in my mind of working your way around this. So then now doing the top, then the bottom. Now for this side here, since this is sort of our pop out region, um, I'll use some more like the background eraser and other things just to kind of maintain the detail of that jar and then we can clean up the edges at the very end. So zooming in on this region, making the brush size smaller, just trying to clean up that edge there. And then we can go back to our straight edge selection tools. All right, so majority of the work is done at this point, but there are some details that kind of matter that are going to help sell this merge. So the way we can sell this a little bit more is we need to kind of blur part of our image so that it blends in with the same sort of depth of field that the phone has. So now to simplify this effect, what I'm going to do is actually isolate the jar even further. So if I duplicate this layer, and then use the background eraser yet again. What I want to do now is create an image where it's just the jar. 
So kind of erasing the, the water. I'll turn this off to make it a little easier for me to see what I'm doing. But just trying to get rid of this sort of background region so that when I go to blur it, it's going to have less effect on the jar. And maybe once getting some clearance, then just using a regular eraser just to make sure all the stragglers are picked up. But it won't be too critical as the, the background color is still going to be very much the same. All right, so we've isolated the jar pretty much in the areas that matter. And then so now we can much more freely on this layer blur to give us that simulated depth of field. So now with this layer selected, what we can do is once again, we can do freehand selection point to point. And, but the big difference here is I'm going to have the feathering be pretty significant because I want that region that I'm going to blur to blend into a region where it's not quite so blurred. So now I can draw sort of a box region here. Pretty narrow, it doesn't have to cover the whole thing. And now you can see the effect of the feathering kind of pulls it a little bit further and then I can say adjust, blur, Gaussian blur. And then we can already start to see how that kind of gives it that matching effect with the background image. And in this case, it's set to 32. That seems to be okay to me. So now we've got our pop out, we've got our blur in the background here, and it looks like we've got a little bit of haloing happening over here. So I'll probably erase that just so that it doesn't doesn't quite have that much of effect there. And then the jar really stands out a lot on its own. And then the only other aspect here that I see in terms of our top layer is that these edges seem a little bit sharper even than the background image as well. So just to get that to blend a little bit better, we can simply take the soften tool and then just go over those edges just a little bit just so that it doesn't have such a strong, sharp point effect on it. Would probably work better if I erased the top layer first so that we could actually see the effect of what I'm doing. So now simply just softening this edge a little bit, just getting it to blend in a little bit more with the background image. And then the last change that I'll recommend just to kind of bring it all together is that the contrast of this jar image is, is quite a bit more intense than the more muted background image. And so that can be mitigated one of two ways. You can either decontrast the picture of the bottle or you can increase the contrast of the background. In this case, I'm going to just increase the contrast of the background by adding a levels adjustment layer and then just bringing the darks up a little bit. There we go. And that's it. So as you can see, the technique is quite simple and it's really just a matter of paying attention to the details, uh, selecting images that have similar lighting and perspective um, elements, and ensuring that whatever type of image you're using, that there's some aspect of it that can you know, overlap the containing border of whatever object it is you're trying to have it pop out of, in this case being the phone. So that's it for me. As always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like updates of new content, feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to support me and this channel, check out the Patreon page that's on the link on the TV, and I will see you guys next time.